are back with some uh, Queen's Wednesday on Why in the Morning. My name is Barry Moses, or it's Barry Moon, every social media platform. I know you're wondering why I'm branded different, but this is something special for anybody out there who experienced bullying or is going through bullying right now. So bullying is a reality uh, of the world right now, and that's why I brought uh, uh, Catherine, a.k.a. Kai, who is the country manager for FaceUp, to shed some light in this. Karibu san. Asante sana, Barry. All right, your camera is number four. Okay. And I like to give everyone an opportunity uh, to, to say all their AKAs <laughs> and uh, all their achievements and all their titles before we can start. Yeah, okay. My name is, uh, official name is Catherine McElwain, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, popularly known as Kay Alianda. Mm -hmm. But I also have several names. Actually, I've got like seven names. Mm -hmm. AKAs. AKAs, yeah. Right. But uh, I like K Alianda. Mm -hmm. So basically, my journey to here, to in the studio today, has been a long one. Mm -hmm. I've been around a couple of times. I've been around the block many times. Mm -hmm. I started my career as a high school teacher. I used mm -hmm. to teach French and English second language. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've done events presentation, I've mm -hmm. done events organization, and then uh, I went back to school, believe mm -hmm. it or not, at mm -hmm. a ripe old age. Yes. And I did um, a third degree, and that degree I studied psychology. Mm -hmm. So at the moment I'm practicing psychology, mm -hmm. and then I'm pursuing a master's as well in community psychology, mm -hmm. which. Um, is a way of working with mental health but at a grassroots community level rather than with individuals. And then one of the things that um, I do, it's not just promoting bullying, but it, uh, not bullying, <laughs> but promoting anti-bullying <laughs> campaigns, yes. uh -huh. but rather it's to work with mental health from a holistic perspective. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of the things that I do um, face up. So FaceUp is one of the products that I am um, using to, to work towards improving our communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Barry said earlier that I'm the country manager for Kenya, it's mm -hmm. a, a product that's uh, developed by students, mm -hmm. for students, students mm -hmm. who actually experience bullying themselves. And uh, the founders of this organization are actually teenagers. They're still teenagers. Mm -hmm. And right the now, founders of the organization. Yes, they're still teenagers because it started as a high school project mm -hmm. and then uh, they turned it into a social innovation mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time a business opportunity. So currently in Africa we have presence in South Africa, in Nigeria and Kenya. Mm -hmm. and so far. Yes, so far and uh, we are seeking to grow and in Eswatini as well, mm -hmm. former Swaziland. Mm -hmm. And then we also... Oh, Swaziland is... Es it's now Eswatini. Eswatini. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I'm up to date now. Yeah, there right. you go. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then India, South America, North America, and it originated from Europe in, mm -hmm. in public Republic of Czech. All right, so you see the reason I have that particular segment where yes, you just look yes, at, the, yes, yes. at the viewers and talk to them because I right. wouldn't have uh, captured all that. So you have a lot uh, that you have done and you have a lot that you mm. want to do as well. Uh, uh, so uh, enough about your profile. When did you start working with uh, FaceUp? FaceUp, for mm. me, the journey started last year, actually, um, when I attended... Um, a meeting mm -hmm. and somebody else was presenting on it mm -hmm. and I got interested so I went to their website and I see that they're looking for partners so mm -hmm. they're looking to expand in different countries of Africa so I got in touch with them and um, they were very quick I guess being young guys they all work through technology mm -hmm. so immediately they came back and then uh, we started working on a strategy on how we can partner so as the country manager, I've been involved from round about October of last year. Mm -hmm. And right now we are looking to put our footprint in schools and institutions in Kenya. So mm -hmm. we are looking to, to interest schools to sign up for the app mm -hmm. and they can start using the, the product. Uh, all right. Yeah. So you've incorporated technology in this cause that you have. Yeah. All right, that is very wonderful because uh, we are living in that age uh, as we speak. Uh, but something uh, got my attention when mm -hmm. you were introducing yourself. You're working with uh, uh, you, mental... Mental health. Mental health yes. wholesomely. Yes, All right, so, holistically. Uh, holistically. Yes. So uh, is mental illness a prerequisite for, for bullying? 
No, it's not a prerequisite in the sense that um, you don't need to be mentally ill to bully people, but mm -hmm. bullying can lead to a lot of mental issues mm -hmm. because especially with the victims, mm -hmm. they end up um, suffering low self-esteem, productivity is reduced. Um, you find that they carry some of the scars, they're damaged for life, some mm -hmm. it's irreversible. So it is something that can then lead to mental mental disease mm -hmm. and then also with the perpetrators often you find that they themselves have some sort of emotional distress that mm -hmm. leads them to bully mm -hmm. so it, it does then fall within the realm of uh, mental health all right yeah. so for as some we know it's mm -hmm. very prevalent within our schools mm -hmm. in fact kenya is actually one of the most uh, highest uh, in terms of internationally compared to other countries we have the highest bullying rate mm -hmm. yeah mm. wow we'll get into to, into the Some stats more of those details, uh, we'll yeah. get into the uh, into the stats later uh, but kenya uh, what does that tell about a society basically what it says when when you see a society that where bullying is so prevalent probably mm -hmm. it's just a culture that is is um there and it's not going away it's also a matter of people not um, accepting that it happens because mm -hmm. i can almost guarantee you that if i went into any national school mm -hmm. or private school and asked do you have bullying they mm -hmm. will deny it yes so, <laughs> <laughs> so nobody wants to be a snitch yeah mm -hmm. and nobody wants to look like they have bullying. So mm -hmm. we have to kind of like sugarcoat it and not uh, call it bullying uh, uh, and call uh, it uh, other uh. things. So that is also a problem. That right is there. the problem. The mm -hmm. stigma of your institution being labeled mm -hmm. is that it's got bullying. Mm -hmm. And then also I think, I mean, just a quick example on my way here to the studio, the amount of stress on the roads, mm -hmm. we, we are quite a stressed city mm -hmm. everyone's stressed to get somewhere people are aggressive mm -hmm. people are shot fused and mm -hmm. shot tempered so you, the you rains make it worse the rains make it worse mm -hmm. and everyone wants to be there at the same time so then you find that yeah we generally live in this sort of like very stressful society which then can really bring on things like bullying all right yeah uh, another thing uh uh, I experienced in school uh, most of the of the bullies had issues mm. that they were not dealing with me either at home or some personal uh, issues do you think uh, judging a bully's parent is something is, is, is the right thing to do okay like in our profession we never judge <laughs> We right. work with what we call have. It out. Yes, you you can call it out, but the problem with calling out, then uh -huh. people get defensive. Mm -hmm. So you just need to work with, say, with the perpetrators, not mm -hmm. so much as blaming them mm -hmm. or judging them or calling them out, but mm -hmm. you want to work with them in a way that helps them understand that it's not their fault that they are bullying, but it's not the way they should be behaving. Mm -hmm. And I think if you approach it from that sort of way, then mm -hmm. it's, it's going to work better than... Because um, most of the times when, when you have bullies, the perpetrators, they're usually suspended from school, mm -hmm. or they are punished, or they are mm -hmm. taken somewhere where they can be taught a dabukidogo. Mm -hmm. So this is not the way to do it? No, not from my <laughs> opinion. No. All right, I, as a psychologist, what do you think is the right approach? <laughs> One of the best approaches, I believe, um, in handling mental health issues within society is preventative. Mm -hmm. not curative because mm -hmm. you don't wait for the fire to start and then mm -hmm. start you know running for buckets of water to mm -hmm. put it off but if we as a society first of all acknowledge that we have this kind of problem mm -hmm. and within our schools within our communities we have we create an awareness that bullying and violence is not the way to solve issues let's say at the workplace how do we help people manage conflict mm -hmm. how do we help people 
manage disagreements. Okay, mm -hmm. I disagreed with you, but that doesn't mean I should punch you. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to respect your point of view. Mm -hmm. I need to understand where you're coming from. So psychoeducation mm -hmm. from a preventative point of view is mm -hmm. one of the key things. Mm -hmm. Let's put out the fires before they start happening. Mm -hmm. And then also within the schools, if we can have peer learning mm -hmm. um, trainings where we um, mentor youngsters to work as counselors between themselves so that if mm -hmm. somebody has a problem, somebody is experiencing bullying or any other depression, stress related, emotional related issues, they have people they can go to as say first responders mm -hmm. before they can get to professionals. All right, yeah. people assume that uh, bullying can only happen uh, let's say in a, in a school setting mm -hmm. from a student to student but uh, they forget that uh, people in authority can also bully the people who are not in yes. authority all right so how does uh, how do you go about this as a as a normal student in school you mean uh, you mean bullying in the workspace or within the school because within the workspace like mm -hmm. you said it's it's power differential yes. and often people abuse power mm -hmm. i mean just because i wear a uniform or because i have a title or because i have more education i can mm -hmm. bully you mm -hmm. because i have more power so mm -hmm. to speak so within the workspace it's really about having the right policies mm -hmm. that guide that organization how to treat each other and mm -hmm. obviously people being able and feeling free enough to report these incidences because a lot of the time people are scared right. that if they report they might lose their job they might get re-victimized mm -hmm. there's always a backlash mm -hmm. yeah. and for the gentleman they might look weak they might especially <laughs> for the gentleman uh -huh. and if your boss is a lady mm -hmm. oh you're going to suffer <laughs> quietly right. yeah right. that's the truth of mm -hmm. the matter because yeah, like you say, men, it's even they're double disadvantaged mm -hmm. because you're supposed to be this strong guy mm -hmm. or society also works. Sometimes we see the women as the victims mm -hmm. and not the men. Mm -hmm. So nobody really Which believes. Which is not always the case. It's not always the case. Either gender can be subject to bullying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So... Uh as a as a gentleman, <laughs> uh, going going to school uh, when we were finishing uh, primary school, head into high school, uh, so uh, parents were obsessed with hardening their kids. Let's take them to boarding school so mm. they can be tough. Let's take them to this and this school so they can be tough. Uh, so people assume this a little bowling will mm. toughen up the child. Do you believe this is true? Will man you up? Yes. The thing is. What is a little? My little is Where's not your little. Where's the line? Because uh -huh. we've heard of horror stories where uh, monos, I think they're called, mm -hmm. in, in boarding school. They are, yes. They're made to sleep on graves. Mm -hmm. They are pushed into swimming pools. Some mm -hmm. are beaten up. Mm -hmm. So what is enough? Mm -hmm. So I, I rather would just not go with this toughening up. Mm -hmm. thing because you never know where it leads to right. and you never know what that bully maybe that guy was experienced such trauma himself and mm -hmm. now he's revenging mm -hmm. and tripling the, uh, right. the revenge so so passing the trauma yes from, and also now thinking okay i right. went through this now i was hit five times i'm mm -hmm. gonna hit you ten times and mm -hmm. where does it stop where does it stop? But yeah. the reality of life it's, uh, is that uh, it's a doggy doggy world. And uh, school is to prepare you for the real world. And uh, in the real world, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a fairy tale out there. Mm. So maybe to some sense it prepares you for, for, for the bullying in the real world. Mm. And that's what I said like when you asked about how do you then explain it in a society as ours, then we are creating that culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if that's the culture you want to keep pushing, then mm -hmm. this is the direction you will go. Uh -huh. But surely, just as there is bullying and there's violence, there's also calmness and peace. Mm -hmm. So what message do you want to preach? Uh, is, and what is, kind is the of question, society do you want to live in? Do you want to live in? Do yeah, you want you to bring want your... To live in, what did you call it? Doggy dog. <laughs> doggy doggy world. <laughs> yeah, doggy doggy world. If you want that kind of world, <laughs> then sure, toughen up your people. But if you want a harmonious, mm -hmm. res you know, mutually respectful community, then 
you're going to look for another way to, to man up people mm -hmm. and to toughen up people, not to get them punched and beaten up. Mm -hmm. I think there was a case probably last year where uh, a high school learner was beaten up to the point that I think he lost his um, mental capacity because he was hit repeatedly on the head. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, and then now you've got a vegetable of a son mm -hmm. at home, then what? Yes. Hmm. And leading to campus, they get, uh, they get into more trouble. More trouble. Uh, then not the workspace, more uh -huh. trouble. Then you're releasing, you're creating a whole society of, of troubled, violent people mm -hmm. because that's the way they know it. Wow. So I think that's the question you need to ask yourself. As a person. Yes. As an <laughs> individual. You. As an individual. Yeah. <laughs> you heard the question you need to ask yourself. What type of society would you like to live in? And bring your kids up in. Uh, so this is Strength of a Woman. Uh, our social media handles are always right there below the screen. Chat with us. Interact with us. We'll appreciate that for sure. Uh, as genius as the name is, it yes. Face Up. Face Up. And you guys have an app as well. Yes, we have an app. How does this app uh, work? And can we get it on Google Play and... Uh, Absolutely. Yes, you mm -hmm. can get it on, on the App Store, mm -hmm. you download it, but the way it works, it's not like if you, Barry, has the app, mm -hmm. it works. You have to be within an institution. Uh -huh. So, like, let's say um, State House, which is the closest school to here, I'll use that as an example. Mm -hmm. So, let's say they sign up for this app, the institution signs up, mm -hmm. because then what happens is there is a dedicated team of people who will handle mm -hmm. mental health issues and mm -hmm. especially bullying. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's not like you can just take the app and then report because where mm -hmm. will you be reporting mm -hmm. unless now your it organization needs to be institutionalized. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that the situation is um, addressed. Mm -hmm. Because the point is you might have you might report bullying, but if nothing is done about it then mm -hmm. There was no reason well. to do it, yeah. Uh -huh. So, like I said, originally it was an app that was developed by high school students, mm -hmm. started off as a project, mm -hmm. and then they turned it into a reality. So it started mm -hmm. within schools, and um, they're looking to expand into institutions like universities and even workplaces. Mm -hmm. So how it works is that a school signs up, and then... Uh, a team of people is agreed upon, mm -hmm. like who will handle the matters when they're reported. Mm -hmm. And then these people can either be in schools which are fortunate enough to have a psychologist or mm -hmm. counselors, or can be some dedicated teacher or the principal, they mm -hmm. get the report. So all these things you're saying are a, pri as a, are a privilege uh, in this country as we speak. Uh, schools don't have psychology. Yes. <laughs> schools don't have uh, the, the, the guides that you were talking about. Yes. These are things that are... Challenges. Uh -huh. I see them as challenges. And I think that it's a good place to start realizing that these are some of the things that we need within our schools. Okay, so the school doesn't have a psychologist or a counselor. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So we as the team can then work with the, some of the teachers mm -hmm. who are... Um, designated for this um, particular reason, we work with them and if they need help on, say, a child reports that um, so-and-so is being uh, called names or is being mm -hmm. body shamed or is being abused or so-and-so reports someone is overeating, mm -hmm. whatever reason. <laughs> Then, um, guilty as charged. Yeah, are you guilty of that? <laughs> so then those are some of the things, if they feel it's not within their capacity, they can then refer to us, because mm -hmm. remember that that is my area. Mm -hmm. And um, actually one of the things that I really want to achieve in mm -hmm. my lifetime mm -hmm. is to make... That was supposed to be the last question, okay. but thank you for bringing should it up. Should I pack it? <laughs> no, 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 just uh, give right, it to can us. Can I unpack? Hot. All right. Uh -huh. So one of the things I'd really like to do is make an impact in the mental health sphere. Mm -hmm. Because I realize that there's very little that's being done. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if you have a sibling, a, a friend, a parent, a child who needs mental health care, mm -hmm. it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, when you think of our mental institutions, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many we have, but yeah. I can think of only two major ones in the yes. country. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the rate of mental illness, mm -hmm. it's 
it's massive. It's massive. So the question is, mm -hmm. where do these people go? Yes. And if you and look at the nobody private Nobody even wants to associate with mental no, institutions. It's like, yeah. I, that's someone mm -hmm. does in. Mm -hmm. People don't appreciate that it's something that can be um, taken care of. And the fact that you've lost your senses doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're useless and you can't be helped and mm -hmm. you should be discarded. But the, the question is, where do they go? Mm -hmm. Where do people like these go? Right. Yeah, so I would really like to start to, to, to make a footprint. Mm -hmm. That is something I feel needs a lot of attention mm -hmm. and I want to really embark on that if you like. Because you are nothing without your mental. Exactly. You can mm -hmm. be physically fit, you're mm -hmm. walking, good looking mm -hmm. guy like you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but without your senses, All right. nothing. Or if you're stressed, mm. nothing. Wonderful thing, right? The <laughs> wonderful impact that you want to leave. Uh, but uh, the big question is: uh, It's nice that you're incorporating technology, but how are you dealing with the fact that uh, mobile phones are illegal in public schools, mm. uh, like the one I went to? That's the thing, um, because I, when um, an innovation starts, say from a Western perspective. Mm -hmm. It starts with uh, from the default point that these things are available. Uh -huh. Then you come uh -huh. to developing uh -huh. countries and you realize, oops, uh -huh. doesn't work. Uh -huh. So again, it's a challenge for the developers. Now they need to sit back and say, okay, this is what's happening uh -huh. in Africa. Uh -huh. we, people don't have access to Wi-Fi just like that. They uh -huh. don't have smartphones. They're not allowed phones. So how uh -huh. do they repackage? Uh -huh. So currently, we will have to maybe work with institutions which have these facilities mm -hmm. as we look to how to redesign because mm -hmm. remember this is an innovation mm -hmm. innovations evolve mm -hmm. they have to serve the needs otherwise they are irrelevant in that society mm -hmm. I like that you mentioned innovation and evolution because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, bullying has also uh, evolved uh, with innovation yeah. technological innovation and uh, we're gone at the days when we just see the physical uh, mm. bullying or the verbal bullying face to face and now people are taking it online people are body body shaming and uh, women are the biggest victims of mm. this uh, cyber bullying I'm not saying men do not go through it but women uh, Base uh, sufferers uh, from this. Uh, mm. So, is it also something you're trying to 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 to, to work on as Facebook? Yeah, because yeah, you're right. Uh, bullying has evolved. It's gone to another new level. Whereas before, say you were in school, you mm -hmm. got bullied in the playground at mm -hmm. break time, and that was over, and you mm -hmm. could go home and you had some peace. Mm -hmm. But now you go home, you look at your phone. It continues. The abuse mm -hmm. continues. So it doesn't leave you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's with us constantly. Um, in terms of face up, what I can say is that because you have the option to report anonymously, mm -hmm. there is some sort of, it's, we say that we give the bystanders mm -hmm. a voice because often with bullying, there's always bystanders, mm -hmm. but people are scared to do anything. Mm -hmm because the bully will target you next. Mm -hmm. There's always a backlash. Mm -hmm. But now because you can report anonymously, mm -hmm. people are being given a voice to speak out. Mm -hmm. I think, was it saying speak up? Mm -hmm. They're being given, report, <laughs> you, you can report anonymously. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be scared mm -hmm. that you can't speak about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that is one of the advantages that we have mm -hmm. as, with the app in that sense. All right, yeah. and non anonymity. Yes, <laughs> anonymity. it's very important uh -huh. because even at work, for instance, your colleague may notice that your boss is bullying you, but uh -huh. they're too scared because mm -hmm. they know if they say anything, they, they become are next. the target. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anonymity and people not wanting to be seen. Mm -hmm as antagonizing the bully mm -hmm. is very important. Wonderful. Uh, schools just opened and uh, a lot of uh, head teachers and principals watch us, by the way. Mm. I'm pretty sure they're watching in the offices right now in the staff rooms. How can they get to, to work with FaceUp if they're interested? Okay, so we do have... Just look them straight okay. into the eyes right there. I was looking at your eyes. <laughs> we, do, <laughs> we do have a website and I can just give it to you. Mm -hmm. So there is the general website page, which mm -hmm. is faceup, um, 
dot com mm -hmm. and then with the Kenyan website it's www.faceup.ke mm -hmm. and then you can get our phone numbers you can get mm -hmm. our email there mm -hmm. and you can ask for more information all right yeah. so from the website they can get the social media handles as well yes and uh, yes just to paint a picture uh, just for people to understand mm -hmm. the kind of country they are living in. What are some of the, the stats uh, pertaining to bullying in this country right now? Okay, um, mm -hmm. I'll just pull that up for you very quickly. As you pull that up, remember we are on social media mm -hmm. at Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram, and Y254 on Facebook. Hashtag is Y in the morning, hashtag is Queen's Wednesday, and the topic of conversation is bullying. And the hashtag is report bullying, courtesy of face <laughs> app. <laughs> Tatiana <And> face no. <laughs> okay, so... Mm -hmm. I was looking at some of the latest research and mm -hmm. there's research done by Professor Ndete mm -hmm. from University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. He conducted research, um, I think it was about three years ago, on 17 schools in Nairobi. Um, he had a sample size of 1,012 students mm -hmm. and out of these he found that uh, the rate of bullying ranges between 63 and 82 percent 63 and 82 percent 82 percent whereas if you compare mm. say to australia it's mm. between it lies between 15 and 20 percent and the u.s so we were nicer in australia we yeah, should move I to australia so. well but if you said <laughs> we need to burn each though. other up it's <laughs> burning at the <laughs> moment so mm. might not be the coolest place to be mm -hmm. so then in the u.s the stats lie between 15 and 30 and in fact the Kenya compares to one of the provinces in South Africa, the mm -hmm. Free State, mm -hmm. whereby they experience 84% um, bullying rate. 84% bullying. Yeah, so we All are right. sort of like competing. <laughs> Alright, I'm, number, <laughs> I'm a numbers guy. All right. yes. For bullying to, to happen, you need a perpetrator and you need a, the vic a victim. Yeah, and you need so bystanders. And you need bystanders. Yes. So 84%, <laughs> that means bullies are more than the, the victims. It's it, the incident, which, no, which, means that, the which means that, say, the 1,012 students that were interviewed, the mm -hmm. sample that was r researched upon, 84% reported to have experienced bullying. Wow. Yeah, not, not that the bullies are... Okay, yeah. <laughs> I get your point now. I get your point. Yeah. All right, so you might have one bully bullying many yes. people. Yes. Right. So, so like say in this room there's mm -hmm. 20 of us and uh -huh. you, you do your research uh -huh. and you find 18 have been bullied. Wow. Yeah. That is the kind of country you live in. That is the kind of country you're raising your child in. <laughs> That is the kind of schools we have in this country. So to make a better Kenya, let's work with Face Up closely. And you can find them at www.faceup. That is up with you, yeah? Yes. Faceup.co.ke. <laughs> dot com. All right. Face dot com is the, is the global one. Is but the Kenyan one? Is K-E. The Kenyan one is K-E. Yes. All right. Be sure to get help from there. And uh, without much further ado, thank you very much for coming. Can through. I just ask you a yes. question before we... Part? Were you ever bullied? Uh, or yes. were you a bully? I was bullied. Okay. But I also bullied a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Before I was bullied. Yeah. Thank you very All right. much. <laughs> so, uh, am I going to your stats? Um, <laughs> are you going to feed me into your statistics? I could, I could maybe do research about right. on people within this broadcast station who have been bullied. Yes. Yes. But I regret my actions. I hope I'm forgiven. Thank you very much for watching uh, Strength of a Woman on White in the Morning. Uh, Callum Eval is coming up next with another hot topic. You don't want to miss it. Thank you. What's wrong?